In this episode of Our Little World, we're going to learn why rain can cause big problems in cities and what we can do to help. But first, let's meet our team for today. Hi, my name is Hamza, and I would like to learn more about sewage water. Hi, my name is Joy Lynn, and I want to know what cities do with stormwater. Hi, my name's John, and I'm very interested in learning more about human impact on our watersheds. My name is Jenna. I work at the Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District, and I am the Green Infrastructure Manager. And this is our behind the scenes team. After this video, you can watch their video that shows you how this whole episode was made. Every time it rains, all that water has to go somewhere. You might see it gathering in puddles or running down the street. This water is called storm water. In forests or fields, when rain hits the ground, the soil, plants, and trees slow the water down, and most of it can soak right into the ground. That helps prevent flooding and keeps the rivers and lakes clean. But in places like cities and towns, so much of the ground is covered with roads, sidewalks, buildings, and parking lots. And when it rains, water can't soak into the ground like it would in a forest. So people design drains and sewers to move the water out of town. But when the stormwater rushes off these hard surfaces in cities, it can pick up pollution, like chemicals, dirt, and even trash and carry it right into our streams, rivers, and oceans. And sometimes in big storms, it can cause flooding and wash away soil, roads, and even houses or buildings. So why does this happen? Well, the problem is how fast the water is moving and how much of it is moving. When the rain falls in cities, it doesn't get the chance to slow down or sink into the ground. So the rain from all the roads, sidewalks, buildings, and parking lots all heads to the same sewers at the same time. That's a lot of water and it moves quickly. But if we can slow the water down or stop some of it from getting into the sewers all at the same time, we can prevent a lot of these problems. And one way to do that is with a rain garden. Rain gardens help to slow down and hold the water and let some of it soak into the ground before it can make it to a sewer. There's a big rain garden at the headquarters for MSD Project Clear, and Jenna is ready to help us learn all about it. All right, welcome to MSD. Do you guys know what we do here? No. Not really. MSD Project Clear, we try and take all the wastewater, all the storm water, and keep it clean before it hits the Mississippi River. And the pipes are only so big, so when it rains a lot and they fill up, that means that some wastewater might not be getting treated and cleaned at the treatment plants. So with all of our rain gardens, we're trying to clean as much water we can where the rainwater falls. So this new patio and everything that MSD put in actually shows a lot of different ways to capture rainwater. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah! All right, let's go. <laughs> well, the first feature we have on our patio is our green roof. Can you see up the periscope there? There's plants on top. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So on the top of the roof, there's a couple inches of soil and a bunch of plants, and the soil helps store the water, and then the plants will help evaporate the water. And you can put this on top of any building to really help um, reduce stormwater in the city from running off. Do you need certain plants to, on the roof, or can you use any plants? That's a good question. You probably wouldn't want to put a tree on the roof because tree roots would go really deep and it wouldn't be able to grow up there. So yeah, we'd use a certain type of, type of we call them native grasses or native plants that have that won't grow too tall and have roots that are too deep. So after the roof soil fills up, if there's a really big rainstorm, then it also runs down this chain into the rain barrel and those will store the water and then we can, there's a pipe there and you can reuse it to water all the plants during a dry season. And then we can walk down here and then these are all the cascades, rain gardens, and then we also have 
more rain chains. These are almost like the gutters you have at your house, except fancier. So the water will come down from the roof and then run down the chain into the rain gardens. Also, I noticed that they have these little, like, they're all in circles and like the circles kind of overlap. Mm -hmm. Is it there so it's like easier to catch the water or like, why is it there? I think the circles will just slow it down. It can run around the side instead of just going splashing straight down. And that would cause the soil to kind of erode and we don't want all the soil and plants to erode away. I think the last thing we have to look at is our pervious paper. So we can go back over here. So see how it's different from the regular concrete? Yeah. Right. So it has um, pores and there's also gravel underneath so you can store about six to 12 inches of rainwater under these. So that's why we have them all here and then sometimes you'll see parking lots with them. We could do all of this at home, right? Yes, you could do all of this at home. Yeah, if you have a, a patio in your backyard, you can put in this, and then you can definitely put in a lot of native plants in your backyard, and if you really wanted to, you can get fancy and put a green roof, because those are pretty cool. Yeah, and especially rain barrels, if you want to put a rain barrel off of your gutters, that helps yeah, keep all the water at your house and reuse it on your yard. Okay, do you guys want to see one of our bigger rain gardens and where a lot of this water ends up? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's walk over there. So this is our, I think our biggest rain garden. So you can see, do you see where the curbs kind of have those V shapes cut out? So that's where the water from all of the parking lot can run down into the rain garden. Um, so then all the water collects here. And then we have some more big plants to help soak up the water as much as possible. And then if it gets really full over there, that's kind of hidden now is where if it fills up, it'll still go into an inlet and then out to the pipes in our street and then go to the treatment plant. But this is supposed to capture most of the water from the parking lot. It would have to be like a really, really big storm to go in that inlet. Do you guys want to learn how to make your own rain garden? Yeah! Yes. All right, let's go. To get you started on your own rain garden, let's go over how to pick the perfect spot, how to get it ready, and which plants will make it work well and look great. First, let's find a good location. Rain gardens need to be in places where water already likes to go, like a low spot in your yard or at the bottom of a gentle slope. Once you've found your spot, it's time to start digging. Not too deep. Rain gardens only need to be a little bit lower than the ground around them. After your hole is ready, choose plants that like being in water sometimes, but can handle dry days too. Bright flowers, tall grasses, and small shrubs all work well. Native, local plants are the best choice because they're used to the weather in your area, and they'll attract local pollinators like butterflies and bees. And just like that, you've got a beautiful rain garden that makes a big difference for your community and ecosystem. Now let's join Hamza, Joylin, John, and Jenna as they build their own rain garden together. Let's grab one and we'll carry that together yeah, as well. Yeah, these things, these bags are pretty quick put in. We'll put ours right up. here. Nice, nice Hamza. Hamza. Sweet. Nice. And you do musical theater too. And this is not a thing, so we can put this right there. Okay. Treat it. Uh, yeah, because the roots, because that is pop. We hope, we hope yeah, they're soft oil, yeah. And then you can just like, oh yeah. Well, this is a creek sedge. Oh yeah, this should like get deep down here by the, the water outlet. Yeah. There is this one root. All the stuff's not going to be all wrapped up together. This is definitely really bad. Yeah, there's a lot of roots there. Yeah. It's your first time holding the worm? Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, seven. Well, that thing is useful. And I did not do the microphone. Watering the grass and plants. Okay, make sure you get the roots. The leaves are they'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. For further resources on digging and planting a rain garden in your area, head over to our website where we've got some great next steps waiting for you and some free coloring book pages to download as well. Lastly, this is our second episode of our show, and we're learning and experimenting with how we can create a show that we love and that you love too. If you have any feedback or ideas, we'd love to hear from you on our website. Now, please click over and join us for a discussion about what we learned and what next steps might be for us as we continue to explore our little world. And these are all the Cascades rain gardens, and then we also have more rain chains. These are all oh. And then it goes back to Mississippi and then Memphis will drink our water. <laughs> our three main cameras each have a different purpose. Do you have a backyard? I do. Okay. Do you grow tomatoes and lettuce? I do. So 